mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, the Lord proclaims to the ends of the earth, say to daughter Zion, your savior comes. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord and you shall be called frequented, a city that is not forsaken. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, when the kindness and generous love of our God, of God our Savior, appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the faith, through the bath of rebirth, and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of his eternal life. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the angels went away from them to heaven, The shepherds said to one another, let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them by this child, about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas, everyone. I got the Christmas spirit. I pray all you do, too. I'm sure you do. Um, so it's last night the place was jammed and I, I always say too that uh, our parish is, has a lot of young families so I think they're all traveling to, to their places uh, it's wonderful this is like our family reunion isn't it and it's just wonderful to be together on Christmas Day and to praise God and to give thanks to God for the child Jesus that's come to us I want to start out with a little story that um, I, I found it to be really powerful and here I'll share it with you. So this happened in 1914. Uh, it took place in the bloody battlefields of World War I. Uh, this had already become long lines of parallel trenches in Flanders and France. Between these trenches was a narrow strip called No Man's Land filled with un- uh, unburied corpses of soldiers killed trying to storm the opposing trench. No man's land was often no more than 70 or 50 or even 30 yards in width. By December 24th of 1914, both British and German soldiers had received a good number of Christmas care packages. The German soldiers even received small Christmas trees. They placed these little trees, decorated with candles, up above the trenches. Then they began to sing Christmas carols. The British troops in the opposite trenches took a few pot shots at the trees at first, but then they started listening to the carols. 
and giving a round of applause after each one. Soon the German soldiers started holding up improvised signs calling for a truce. You no fight, we no fight. British units held up signs in response. Merry Christmas. By Christmas morning, whole miles of no man's land was filled with fraternizing soldiers from both sides, laughing, singing, exchanging gifts, addresses, and postcards, and finally, being able to bury the dead. Some soldiers who were barbers before the war even set up shop and offered free haircuts. One soldier was a professional juggler who put on a show. Some of the units organized soccer games with helmets set on the ground for goals. According to the diary of a soldier from the 133rd <coughs> Saxon reg Regiment, their game ended in a 3-2 score with the Germans victorious. Even against the orders of the senior officers, the truce lasted in some parts of the trenches until New Year's Day. It was as if just for Christmas, God wanted to remind the world that even in the middle of war, the most terrible scourge that sin ha has unleashed, God is present. Even when we give up on him by sinning, he never gives up on us. His grace can make a difference. A truce. I want to share that story because I think it's time for that, don't you? I mean, I hear stories. People get together for the holidays and someone brings up a topic that offends another person and all of a sudden the war starts and anger erupts. I don't know. I think it's time to call a truce. A time for us to forgive, forget. A time for us to remember who we are. We're children of God. We're brothers and sisters. We're family. We may have opposite views on things, but those can wait. We do want to help other people to understand the truth, but sometimes it's not worth the war, especially at this time of year. You know, I really um, ask us all to make this particular Christmas a time for truce. Isn't it more important that we love on each other? We share the most precious of all gifts, our joy, our peace, our hope. Isn't it more important that we try to build each other up? To try to find the best in each other. To try to bring out the best in each other. A phrase that I like to use a lot is, it's not important that we win the war, but we win the soul. Or it's not important that we win the argument. It's important we win the soul. I think it's great for us to make it what we want to bring each other into, compelling, attractive, something that is hard for us to deny. We want to draw people to that manger, don't we? I think in our heart of hearts, at a spiritual level, most times at a subconscious level, we're searching, aren't we? We're awaiting the coming of the Lord. <clears throat> Those shepherds got a message. And what did they do? They said, let's go. Let's roll, right? Let's, let's check into this. Over my 34 years of priesthood, I've seen so many of those stories. People's hearts were tweaked. What is this? Is this something I'm supposed to head toward? And again, it's our love, our joy, our peace, our hope that draws people to that manger. I remember, too, how Jesus came into the world. Yeah, he's an all-powerful God. He's our boss. But he comes to us as a small, helpless, 
child, a baby, to say, yeah, I want you by my side. Yeah, I want us in this together. I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to fear monger you. I'm going to come in as a helpless tiny little baby and beckon you to come. Awaiting something that changes everything. <clears throat> then, and the stories that I've heard over, and I'm one of those stories that I've heard over many years, they turn, they follow that tweak in their heart, they check it out, and they're amazed. Just like those shepherds. Amazed. Just like Mary, when she heard the shepherd's story. Amazed. God wants us amazed. I always like to point Ben to watching the children Christmas morning. What you have hidden from the wise and the learned, you have revealed to the childlike. So excited. This is awesome. I use the word awesome all the time. I try to follow their deepest wisdom. Get excited about everything. Be amazed about everything. God, you're amazing. What you have created is amazing. Living is amazing. My family, my friends, they're amazing. I don't want to win the argument. I want to win this soul. And then, filled with awe, like those shepherds, like those wise men we'll hear about, they knelt and adored. Adoring the Lord. I can't live without you. You're my everything. I, I want to live in your presence at all times. I want to be in a state of grace. It's a power that helps me easily love, easily bring joy, easily bring hope to people around me. No, I'm not going to win the argument. I'm going to win the soul. Do you see? Awaiting, adoring, amazing. This Christmas is a wonderful time for us, too draw near to our Lord in the manger but to make sure all the walls come tumbling down all the no man's land that separates us from our loved ones becomes a place where we embrace for Christmas 2022 let's call it truce and so if you're tempted, a topic comes up, remember what they did. Instead of fighting, they sang. And so someone tries to get that argument going, just go, Hark the herald angels sing. <laughs> Let's sing today. Let's have a truce. Merry Christmas, I love you. On God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, before all ages, God
grateful, loving Father, for the gift of your Son, the Prince of Peace. Help us today to call a truce. Help us today to embrace each other. Help us to be love, to be joy, to be peace, to be hope. And so as we offer our prayers today, we do so with hearts filled with love for you. For Francis, our Pope, and Donald Hyene, our Bishop, and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, may God give them understanding and compassionate hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live under oppression or with intimidation and fear, may the Holy Spirit fill their hearts with courage and relieve them of their burden. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this faith community discerning vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may they be confident in our love, support, and prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, may God grant them rest and peace in eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intention of this Mass, the people of the parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that at my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day, what you've manifested to the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he appeared visible in ours. And begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Te Sabao. Pleni sucelia terra, gloria tua, o sara in excelsis, benedictus, qui veret in domine domini, o sahana in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all those who hold you the truth, head on the Catholic and apostolic faith celebrating the most sacred night day on which the Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior of this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Quisogenes, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O oh God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, which John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Et te debita nostra, sicur et nos tibis, debitoribus nostris, et te nos in ducas in tentation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, O merciful God, <clears throat> ju that just as the Savior of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dominos Fobiscum. Perdica vos in Deus, Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Santos. Amen. Ita misahes. Merry Christmas, everyone. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Oh,